Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sri Kumar. I graduated uh, from uh, UCE, which is what it was called way back in 1991. And in these 27 years, a lot has changed. Besides the institution and the students, uh, the numbers growing bigger, I see a very big change in the energy levels in the students here. I spent a lot of time last evening. I see so much enthusiasm, energy, and ambition to, to work on innovative entrepreneurial ideas, which are very practical, practically oriented, and which are very relevant in the times that we live in today. So in keeping with the theme of the conference, I'm very happy to share with you my thoughts on a potentially unsolvable problem and my ideas on a potential solution. And I call this plastic roads, which means it's the same road that we see outside of the road, uh, outside of the university and other places that we go, same roads, but built with melted waste recycled plastic. Is this a new idea? Not necessarily. Is this the only idea? Not necessarily. But I want to share with you this idea of how to solve a problem of road connectivity and road building in India from the lens of not just an engineer, but also as a, as a commercial and financial investor. So in a very techno-commercial sense, I just want to talk about this idea. And if it is of interest to any one of you, Maybe this is something you should look at it in your ideas and innovation club because in the business that I'm in, this is, this is where the industry is beginning to embrace such ideas. And already I can see in a few instances uh, these what, what I call plastic roads have already started being implemented. And there's a big body of research behind this and there is significant scope for implementing this idea about which I want to talk to you. In my own organization, in my own business also, we are very actively looking to implement this idea further. So let's just come to think about the stats that confront us today in terms of road building. And I just focus a little bit on rural India. We have 4 million rural roads, 4 million kilometers of rural roads today, out of which 4 lakh kilometers need upgrades, relaying every year. These 4 million roads, they connect 70% of rural India. That's where the heart of India is. The farm production happens. The farmers live there. 70% lives there, and they are not having the best of connectivities. The same also holds for urban roads, but that's a separate discussion. From the, as per the various programs of the government of India, 100 kilometers of roads, rural roads are being built every day. Can we keep up with this massive program of upgrading 4 lakh roads 4 lakh kilometers of rural roads every year, building 100 kilometers a day in a resource-constrained economy? Perhaps not. So we have to think of solving the problem of expanding the road network of much by building better quality roads and at a lesser cost and in an environmentally friendly manner. And that's where this idea perhaps has seen or is about to see the, see the day in terms of execution. A lot of research has already happened in this area, but I believe, it's my, my belief at this stage, that from an execution and implementation point of view, maybe the time for this idea may have come. So that was a big picture on roads and what's the kind of challenge that we face in terms of building roads, rural roads. Now let's look at the other side of the picture, plastic waste generation in India. The per capita plastic waste generation is 18 kilograms per person per annum. So the next time you have your wafers and you have your plastics, just remember you are one of the contributors to your own 18 kilos per year. At a national level, 15,000 tons of plastic waste is generated a day. Potentially 94% of this can be recycled, but less than 60% is recycled. What happens to the rest? It ends up in landfills, it ends up in choke drains, goes into the oceans, or pure litter that we find around us. Is there a way to recycle? Yes. So this is, 
there are several ways to recycle this plastic. The technologies are there. And one such application post recycling is, is certainly in the area of roads, which is what I would like to share a little more in detail. What are the advantages of recycling this, uh, this amount of plastic that gets generated? A ton of plastic recycled saves 3.8 barrels of oil. So we save import bill. And, as a, and I'll talk to you a little down the line. In a typical one kilometer rural road of a three and a half to four meter width, 18 tons of bitumen, 8% uh, by weight of bitumen can be substituted by plastic. Those are the numbers with, with us. A typical bitumen road, 8% by weight of plastic can substitute bitumen. So in other, if you really put some numbers to it, 18 tons of bitumen can be replaced by plastic. If this is done, and this is the same plastic, pet bottles, carry bags, and other such plastic containers. You collect them through rack pickers, you shred them, convert them into smaller aggregates, and then they are ready to be recycled and used in road building, about which I'll talk to you about. The surprising thing that I found when I did some research on this subject is that plastic waste recycling guidelines are very well entrenched in our, uh, in our policy framework and in the codes of the Indian Road Congress. And that's why I said, perhaps from an implementation point of view, its time may have finally come. So let's just keep these broad numbers in mind. 18 tons of bitumen can be replaced, sorry, 8% by weight of bitumen can be replaced by plastic, which is about 18 tons of plastic per, per kilometer of road. So here is the way this technology works. Considerable research has already taken place in India. So we have these hot aggregates that you see in these hot mix plants which are uh, by the roadside when the roads, road works are carrying on. These aggregates are heated to 160, 170 degrees centigrade as per procedure. And in these hot aggregates, the shredded plastic is mixed in a ratio of about 8%. And what you get is polymer coated aggregates. And this polymer coated aggregates makes the aggregate more waterproof and increases its binding strength, binding properties. And this polymer coated aggregate is then again mixed back with bitumen, which is our good old technology. And what you get is polymer bitumen aggregate mixture. Or there are several terminologies or polymer mixed bitumen or polymer coated bitumen aggregates. And these aggregates go into building the road. And you can see it in the figure. The one on the left is the one with the polymer uh, aggregate. And one on the right uh, is the normal aggregate. And when we build this, the roads end up having superior properties. And I'll talk about it uh, shortly. The porosity is less. The density is better. The bonding is better. Lesser potholes. And those are the, the, those are the results that you get. Potholes, raveling cracks, evenness, bonding, so, uh, monsoon conditions, aggressive environment conditions. These roads tend to withstand uh, these uh, environment aggressions much better. So the only difference here is it's the, same, it's the same way of building the roads, but you add a layer of bonded bitumen as a, as a, as a layer. What's the size of the opportunity? And I did some very high level numbers from a techno-commercial perspective, does this make sense? And why should we consider looking at this? Why does this idea make sense? So let's just, let me walk you through the numbers. So suppose 18 tons of vitamin by weight is replaced by plastic when we build a, a single kilometer of rural road of 3.5 meter weight. A ton of a bitumen costs 50,000. Let's say the ton of sourcing shredded plastic from rack pickers, processing, shredding, manpower, overheads, transport, let's add Let's say the cost is 20,000. The saving is 30,000 rupees. And if we build 100 kilometers of new roads per annum and we save this kind of bitumen, it translates into 2,000 crores of annual saving purely in new build roads. And if we extend the same logic to replacing and relaying the 4 lakh roads, kilometer of roads that we need on an annual basis, the saving or the business opportunity can be as high as 22,000 crores per annum. So that's the scale. So why hasn't anybody thought about it if it is so simple? It's just that the technology has finally evolved to a point where it can be commercialized. Tests have already been carried out in respect of rural roads. Tests are already beginning to take place in respect of urban roads and highways. So I do believe it's a matter of time before this idea 
becomes really, really a big, uh, big concept in the industry, and we see very active use of recycled, melted plastic in building roads. There are other savings too. Import bills, as I said, a ton of plastic recycled saves 3.8 barrels of oil, so that's like 2,000 crore saving in the fuel bills. On top of that, if we upgrade the level of recycling of plastic today from about 59-60% as a national average by another 20%, we see significant scope for further savings and also reduction of the import bill. So that's a, so I, I try to look at it more from a pure commercial, techno-commercial sense as to say why should something like this not be a compelling enough business proposition? Why can't a, a technology or a bunch of people work a little more on this technology and develop this in a, on, a, on a commercial scale? So that's, that's the way, that, 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 that's the slide here just summarizes all the benefits of this, this, this new technology. Better resistance to rainwater, better resistance to water stagnation, no stripping, potholes, cracking, you name it, it has all the properties. There are studies that show the, pretend, the life of a road can improve by between 35 to 100% by adding and blending it with melted plastic. It creates employment for rack pickers and a whole host of industry value chain participants, machinery makers, subcontractors, small scale industries, not just rack pickers, a whole value chain can be created out of recycled plastic, besides looking at the savings and the value it creates in terms of road building. So the same kilometers of roads we can either develop at a lesser cost and better quality, or with the same budget we can increase and extend the road network to a bigger. So my main, my main, uh, this was just an example of how something that looks like a big unsolvable problem, if we break it down into smaller components, think about it in a very techno-commercial sense, solutions can be found. So my learning out of my learning out of my experience in life is never be intimidated by a big problem. Never be threatened by the complexity or the scale or size of a problem. The bigger the problem, the bigger the vision has to be. The bigger the problem, the more you have to think about it in terms of its smaller parts. And the more we break down a big problem into smaller parts, the better are our chances of solving it. Otherwise, the nature, size, and complexity of the problem can truly intimidate us. And you either fight or you flight. And don't ever fly away from a situation. Just go out there and fight the problem. Always think logically. Break down the problem. There is nothing. There is. It's, it's all logical, methodical, methodical thinking and applying all that we know to break down the problems. And that's my biggest learning out of all the experiences that I have had from a, in, a, from in the professional field. So I thought this is one idea I wanted to share with you, something that I'm very passionate about. We're trying it in, the, in my own organization and I'm already seeing the industry embrace some of these best practices. There are several other variants of this that can be also applied. One, if, we, if this technology can be perfected, we can have plastic bonded paver blocks. Today we see paver blocks which are made of ceramic tiles. We can have plastic bonded paver blocks. We can have plastic bonded walls in the houses or ceilings. And the research for that has already undergone, uh, already started. So the concept is the same. How do we use or how do we substitute an existing bunch of products by some alternatives which have either same or better properties but at a lesser cost they produce better quality and have lesser cost, lesser cost and, and a much, and the availability of that, of that raw material is not a constraint. So I just like to reiterate and share this message once again with you. Think big, have big ideas, never be scared of the size and scale of the problem. The more the size and complexity of the problem, the more you should feel challenged about it and break it down. Always break it down to smaller components so that you can solve it. Thank you very much.